Hi, in this video we're going to learn how to name molecules using the RS nomenclature system. So in other words, how to determine the configuration of a stereocenter. Remember that a stereocenter, which is denoted with a star, can be also be called a stereogenic center or an asymmetric center. We can determine whether a molecule has an asymmetric center by looking at the groups attached. When an atom, like this carbon in the center, has four different groups attached to it, it is known as a stereogenic center, which is denoted with a star. So similarly, this molecule on the right has a single stereogenic center. Notice that the methyl group in blue is not a stereogenic center because it's bonded to three hydrogen atoms. It's not bonded to four different things. Similarly, the carbon of the CH2 is bonded to four groups, but not four different groups. Notice there are two hydrogens on this atom. So there's only one stereogenic center in each of these molecules. Now these two molecules are enantiomers, represented by an E. So they're different molecules, and yet by their name, we would call them both, at this moment, 2-butanol. So we have to find a way to communicate that we're actually talking about different molecules. We have to name them differently. And this is where the RS configuration comes in. So this, what we're looking at on the right-hand side is a series of rules that lets us determine whether we should call a given stereocenter R or S. Now take note that this is a nomenclature. These are nomenclature rules. These are not what the molecule is doing. The molecule doesn't know if it's R or S. This is not a physical construct. So to be able to assign R and S, let's start with the molecule that we've been working with. We assign priorities to the four atoms bonded to the stereogenic center. The atom with the highest atomic number gets highest priority. So the oxygen gets priority number one. Notice that it's not the mass of the atoms um, or the size of the group. It's We look first at the atom directly bonded to the stereogenic center. So the lowest atomic number gets priority four. And then we have to figure out what to do in the case of a tie. So in this case, to the right of the stereocenter is a carbon, and to the left is another carbon. So if we go to B, if two atoms on a stereogenic center are the same, we assign priority based on the atoms next to them, looking for the first point of difference. So in this case, we start at the stereocenter. We have a carbon and a carbon. They're identical. So we go one atom farther. And in this case, we would come up with a or carbon versus a hydrogen. Carbon has a higher atomic number than hydrogen, and so it's the group on the left that gets priority two, and on the right, priority three. So we've assigned the priorities. We go to number two, and this is the one that many people forget. We need to put the lowest priority group at the back. So we'd make up a model of the molecule and rotate the molecule so that whatever group has priority four is at the back or as a hash. Now in the molecule we're using, it already is like that, so we, there's nothing else that we need to do. The next step is to trace a circle between the priority groups. So notice in this case we have one, two, three, and when we draw a line from one to two to three, that line goes in an anti-clockwise direction, which tells us that the configuration of this stereocenter is S. It's also almost like we're drawing an S as we go from one to two. If the groups have been oriented in the other way, one, two, and three, and so the arrow would be going clockwise, that would be the R configuration. So now we can go back to this original molecule and ad adjust the, no the name of the molecule because now we know this is the S configuration, we would call this S2-butanol. If there was more than one stereocenter, we would also have to say where that stereocenter was located. So then we would say 2S2-butanol. In this case, there's only one stereocenter, so we can simply say S2-butanol. We assign the priorities for the other enantiomer. Notice the priorities get assigned exactly the same way. But this time when we go to number two and we put the lowest priority group on the back, what we end up with is the one, the 
the three on the left and the two on the right. So this is the R configuration. So the molecule on the right is R2-butanol. So by assigning configurations of the stereocenters, we can differentiate using the names between these two molecules. We can also predict the maximum of number of stereoisomers a given molecule might have. So first we count the number of stereocenters. And the maximum number of stereocenters is given by 2 to the n, where n is that number of stereocenters. So in this molecule, where n equals 1, 2 to the 1 is 2. So this molecule has a maximum of two stereoisomers, and they are here. In this molecule on the right, there are two stereocenters. So the maximum number of stereoisomers is 2 to the 2, or 4. But we still have to draw all those possible stereoisomers and then compare them to make sure that all four are actually different molecules. If we end up with two that are the same, that's what would give us less than the maximum number. So for example, a stereoisomer might be bromine up, OH up, making these two diastereomers, D for diastereomer. I could also draw both the groups down. And this is when I have to make sure they're actually different molecules. And in fact, in this case, they are. They are enantiomers. Another molecule I could draw would be bromine down, OH up. And again, those are diastereomers of the ones before, enantiomers of the ones side by side and across our diastereomers. So in this case, there are four different molecules, and you can double check that with a model. Now there's an interesting situation of an achiral molecule that actually has stereocenters. So a meso compound is a type of achiral molecule that has more than one stereocenter. So for example, this molecule is a meso compound. It has two stereocenters, but notice that it has a plane of symmetry right down the middle. And because both sides are identical, we can identify this as an achiral molecule. So it's a, a meso compound is a type of achiral molecule. Notice that that might not be immediate obvious, immediately obvious when you look at the chair, or even sometimes it might not be obvious when you draw it, the molecule flat. So the best test then if you can't see the plane of symmetry or an axis of symmetry is to make a model of the molecule, make a model of its mirror image, and try to superimpose the two. In this case, this molecule is superimposable on its mirror image, telling us that it's an achiral molecule.